Google has made some really interesting choices in the past, and by interesting, I mean very stupid choices, but the A lineup of phones was something that was absolutely a stroke of master genius because they pulled off something that I didn't expect them to. I really thought that the A lineup, when it first came out with a 3, uh, the Pixel 3a XL and the Pixel 3a, I really thought it was dead in the water. I thought they shouldn't have done it. I was dead against it. But over the years, I have come to love the A lineup and phone so much that I've owned the 4a, 5a, 6a, 7a, and now the Pixel 8a. So let me go ahead, get this box opened up, and let's check out what the new 8a has to offer when compared to the 7a. So right off the box, the box looks exactly the same as last year. So uh, no big changes with that. And inside you've got the phone front and center. Let me go ahead and pull this off. I've gotten the porcelain color this time, which looks whitish sometimes, but then it looks gold beige too. Like it, it's a interesting color. It doesn't really look like the titanium iPhone either. Uh, they're very different colors obviously, but uh, I would say that it's a shade of beige is the best way to describe it. Inside the box you get a USB-C to C cable, you get uh, a USB-A to C dongle, which I'm really impressed that they still give because USB-A has pretty much been gone for a while. You get a SIM card eject tool and you've got like two little pieces of paperwork in there which are probably just regulatory stuff. So let me go ahead and push this off to the side and let's look at the phone itself. The phone feels quite chunky. It, it reminds me of the Google, I'm sorry, the Galaxy S23, uh, the sides especially. I, I, if you just showed me the sides of this phone, I would have been very convinced it's a Galaxy S23 FE particularly. Uh, when you compare it to the Pixel 7 side by side, it is a little bit shorter, which I'm actually okay with. I didn't like how tall the 7A was, but that being said, let me go ahead and pull off the uh, plastic here and coming off there we go the front of the phone has way more rounded corners now which is a welcome addition i was getting a little bit frustrated with these very sharp and pointy edges they are not very comfortable in the palm whatever you do about them they're just not as comfortable as having a nice rounded corner which i'm glad that google has made changes with but i have to say it does make the phone look i don't know it just it doesn't look as sharp as before, and that is something that is hard to get over. I, I know that with time, it'll, it'll get a little bit more easy to look at, but right now, I, I do like the visuals, the way this visually looks, the 7A, but the physically, in terms of feel in the hand, the 8A feels super comfortable, and it feels lighter too. So right off the bat, even without the screen on, I can notice that the bezels are significant. I mean, they're not any more, any worse than the Pixel 7a, but for a shape like this, I'm just used to seeing bezels that go way further to the corner with every other phone uh, that I have used with this similar shape. So with the phone on, you guys can see what the screen looks like. So the display has definitely made some gains that I will get into a little bit more detail with. I'm gonna set this phone up really quickly so that I can get a good idea of what it feels like in the hand and then come back to you guys with a little bit more information. So I just spent the last couple of hours messing around this phone, getting to know it, and let me go ahead and start off by showing you guys around the phone because I didn't do that in the beginning. So on the right side, you've got the power button, volume up, volume down, and all the buttons feel and pretty much look the same. So it is gonna be a little bit difficult to differentiate the two uh, uh, different controls here. I wish that there was a little bit more of a textured button. Google has done some of that in the past, but I guess they're kind of off that train now. Uh, at the bottom, you've got cutouts for your speaker, microphone, and the USB-C port as well. And then on the side, just the SIM card tray, nothing else, clean. You do have the antenna bands that line up perfectly with the camera visor. Same on the side with the camera uh, antenna, sorry, the uh, phone antennas. And on the top, you've got a microphone and nothing else. Build quality, pretty good. No side to side, no flexing, um, no creaks when pressed on the back or the front. It is a solidly built phone. The back is a plastic back, but it feels very premium. It feels just like glass. It is a matte finish now. It used to be a glossy finish on the 7A, but now in a matte finish. So looks pretty good. The camera visor is a little bit uh, thicker, 
but the camera sensors are still the same. You do get the same uh, camera setup that you had on the Pixel 7a on the 8a as well. And honestly, that's not a bad thing. Cameras are one of the uh, really good features and parts of the 7A, so keeping it the same, not upgrading it, it's not actually a really big deal, mostly because Google really handles most of the camera stuff on the software end anyway, so the hardware really doesn't make a difference. And to prove my point, you can go ahead and look up the 8A's webpage on Google's website, and there are pretty much no mentions of the hardware itself. There's software, all the cool things it can do in software, but no real like, oh, we've added this megapixel camera, this, that, nothing, because they haven't changed anything. Uh, front camera is still the same too. I've taken a couple of sample photos. They look great. Um, pretty much exactly what you expect from Google. And other than the build quality, let's talk about this porcelain color too. I did show it off a little bit at the beginning, but here's an even better look at it. The back is a off-white, and then this visor is a definite gold. Like if this gold wasn't there, I might've just said it's an off-white, but this gold, uh, the gold frame and the gold visor definitely are uh, what make it feel Feel more gold than it actually is. Honestly, not a fan of this gold. I wish they would have gone with silver. I do like that. The 7A had a way more silvery color, which was, I think, a lot more elegant looking compared to this, which looks kind of like a copy of, not really a copy, but it feels definitely inspired of the uh, Galaxy Z Fold, especially the, uh, the camera right here, the visor and the frame do kind of share similar color hues there. And moving on, let's talk about the display. So the display, as I told you guys earlier, is one of the areas where there's a lot of changes and mainly with the way the screen looks, because you guys can see the screen itself has a very different shape now. Uh, it looks smaller, even though it's not really. It's just the fact that there is less area because of these cuts and the way that the screen is shaped now. Uh, since you don't have a more squared off edge, it does look smaller. And the, with this phone, I told you guys earlier that I, it felt smaller. So the phone is actually smaller, but not by much. It's by like one or two millimeters on every dimension, including the thickness, which I honestly thought this phone was way thicker than it is. I thought that the uh, seven, the 8A was a thicker phone compared to the 7A, but looking at the numbers, this is actually 0.1 millimeters thinner, but the way it's shaped, and I think just the way it's designed, it makes it feel thicker than it really is. So dimensions wise, it is familiar, but not at all. Like it feels like a completely different sized phone in comparison to the 7A. On the topic of dimensions, let's talk about the screen. This is a 6.1 inch display. It's got a 1080p OLED screen. It does have refresh rate up to 120 Hertz now compared to the 90 Hertz on the 7A. One thing I did notice though, is that this phone actually didn't have it enabled out of the box. It was stuck at 60 Hertz, not even 90 Hertz. It was completely turned off and you had to go turn it on in the display settings. And I think that a lot of people will end up using this phone never enabling that feature. Other than that, the screen is actually really nice. It gets very bright. I watched some HDR content on it and it is incredibly vivid and bright. I mean, this room is very bright right now with the studio lights in front of me and all the lights on above. So the lighting to still, the, like the display to still be brighter and be very visible on that was very impressive. And that's a really good thing. It does have 2000 nits of peak brightness and 1400 nits of HDR brightness. So that is a great, addition, this is a great improvement on the display itself. Overall, the display is a part of this phone that I think is a really nice upgrade over the 7A, and it might actually be the only real upgrade besides the design. The battery stays the same, and when we talk about overall performance, it gets 18 watts of wire charging, which is unfortunate, it really needs more because the, uh, the thing about these phones is that the charging is really slow and I wish that they would give you a small bump up to like 30, 35, nothing crazy like 120 watts, but just something a bit more so you can just kind of do those quick top ups and keep going without having to worry about the phone taking forever to charge. It does have wireless charging, but again, capped to a very slow speed of seven and a half watts which is unfortunate, really. I mean, I'm not saying I want, like, a, again, crazy speeds, but something that is nominal that, like, lets the phone actually charge up on a quick but not too crazy basis. And on the topic of charging, battery is at 4,400-ish, 4,500-ish milliamp hours. Decent, but knowing and having history with the Pixel phones, that usually doesn't cut it, more so because of the Tensor chip. The Tensor chip, while it's in-house, the Tensor G3 is what is now available on the 
Pixel 8a. It is now on a four nanometer architecture, so I don't know how it's gonna be uh, performance wise and how the efficiency will be. But in the past, the seven, especially the Tensor G2, was a chip that got very hot and it was very difficult to keep that phone cool, especially if you were doing anything that was like mildly intensive, that thing would heat up so quick. So it was very frustrating because it heats up so much and because it's not working the best, the battery also just ended up feeling very mediocre. So hopefully this would be a little bit different and given it's on a smaller uh, architecture, might be not making any like claims right now. I'm gonna have to use this a little bit more to figure it out, but that is something to keep in mind. And with all that being said, there is something that I'd like to talk about when it comes to pixels. The Pixel 8a is priced too high, but it's not the permanent price. Google is definitely gonna drop the price on this because that's what they've done in the past with the 7a, with the 6a, with the 5a, with the 4a, and so on and so forth. They launch it at a price and then a couple of weeks, couple of months down the road, that price drops and it usually stays there and you can find them on sale here and there for about around that price. So it's unfortunate that they're playing games like this in my opinion, because what it does is it very much so confuses a customer as to which phone to get. A lot of people, a lot of other YouTubers have come to the conclusion that the Pixel 8 is the better buy than the 8a because at $500, you only have to pay 50 or $100 more because that phone is on sale and you can get a better phone. But what I have to say is that that is actually not the best argument right now because this phone is gonna get a price drop too, not today. So if you're gonna buy a phone today, today, the eight is the right call. But if you're looking to buy a value, a good value, waiting a little bit and getting this phone from about anywhere around 400 or under 400 would be a great deal, I think, because the hardware is, is pretty good. With the history of Pixel, you know that the cameras are gonna be great. And overall, the packaging of this entire phone is pretty nice. So you're getting a pretty good display, you're getting pretty good everything, pretty much. So the pricing is where it really, really breaks down for me because at $500, very hard to recommend. At $350, a instant buy, and anywhere in between those two is where you have to evaluate how much the uh, upgrade cost of the eight versus this makes sense to you. Because yes, you'll get a slightly better camera. Yes, you'll get smaller bezels around the phone. And yes, you'll get a slightly bigger display too. But the question that ends up being, is that worth it to you? For me, I don't think so. If, if this phone were priced exactly, if you were to buy them for the price they sell, brand new, 500 versus 700. If there's a $200 gap between those two phones, the 8A still holds exceptional value in my head. And knowing that they're gonna drop prices because of history, and, and you guys can go look this up. Go look up the 7A's price history. Go look up the, uh, the Pixel 8's price history. The Pixel 8 was actually selling for $500 just a couple of months, like uh, two months ago. In fact, 10 days ago, it was selling for $550 on Amazon. So. Google is artificially increasing the prices. Like it is at 700 now. Again, if you wanna go buy it on Google, it's at 700. And if you wanna go buy it on Amazon, it's at 670. Whereas just 10 days ago, it was 550. Nothing has changed with the phone. It's the same phone. It's not like they were running a crazy promo or something either. That's just what the price was for a long time. And then suddenly they've brought it back up. And that's clearly because this phone has come out and they wanna to try to milk as many people as they can and get 500 out of them. And then when those people are done, they're gonna drop the price and get more people in, which could be an effective strategy, but not when you have another phone that is competing right there. And then you have to keep upping and lowering the price because then what happens is the entire value proposition just goes awry. And that's what I feel is happening with the Google Pixel 8a and pretty much the A lineup for the last couple of years. It's like we're stuck on repeat. Same cycle happens again where the eight, uh, the, the lower, the mid variant, the one that's lower than the pro and the A variant are always overlapping just so much with each other that it doesn't make sense to figure out which one you want. In fact, it feels like you're stuck between two choices and you just end up not wanting to go for either one. And that's where I really hope Google makes a change. They really need to figure out pricing. Just make this phone lower. Just price it at $400 out of the bottle. Right? You're gonna do that a little bit down the road. Why are you trying to do this cash grab that won't net you much, I feel like, in retrospective to your entire company? So why does it really make a difference? Keep it at 400, keep people like hammer into the fact that the Pixel is a value brand. You can get the best value out of it. I'm not saying a cheap brand, I'm saying value. And I've always felt like Pixel can be good value. It just isn't because of the 
initial and crazy pricing that they go for. And that just really goes to show you that Google really, really needs to have a very, very close look at what they're doing sales and pricing wise and make a big change because the phones itself are great. They're being let down by pricing which is nothing new for Google. If you wanna check out the Pixel 8a, I'll have it linked down in the description below. Keep watching those prices. I am certain they're gonna drop. And if they do drop, I will try to make a post or make a short about it so you guys will know what's going on. And if you have any more questions about this phone or any phone, please feel free to leave a comment down in the comments below because I love interacting with you guys and I really love those engagements and comments that we have. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.